didn't see any questions sent in for homework, so that means you're understanding everything, or you haven't done your homework, either one. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to review a little bit of inverse functions out of algebra and show a couple of things just as soon as I start. You know, I understand people Skyping, but come on, people, do it right at 11.10 or before. It's getting ridiculous. Going out of my way to let people do this, and they can't even shut up. And then they can't be reached. There's your offline. So. Now I gotta wait on her to text me back so I can get started. Okay, as soon as I hear from Miss Simmons, we'll get started. One more time. I don't mind going through the rigmarole before class, but when it's 15 minutes after class, I get a little bit irritated. All right. Now everybody should see my desktop. I think everybody's here. All right. First, say again. I didn't hear what you said. I'm sorry. Well, well, they should. <laughs> Duh. When it's called college trig, it usually you don't buck it. That's why they had to have that on 120. Was it 120 that you needed? Um, what, what syllabus did I send you? You sent me 120, and they accepted it as a step but not one of the statistics course. Well, that's normal. Usually there's at least one more statistics course. That, what's your major? Physical. Yeah. I have usually, usually when you go into a, to a field that has a lot of statistics in it, you, uh, not a lot of statistics, but a, a lot of biology, usually they put another or one or two statistics course in there. Usually it's three or one, which is... Elementary statistics, which is kind of like this class 1.5. But anyway, I pulled up a I pulled up a couple of examples from algebra, from your college algebra or your algebra one. Let me just pull them up, and somewhere on here I pulled it up. Let's see where did I put it? Up? There it is. Here's one. Find the inverse function of y is equal to 4x plus 8. y is equal to 4x plus 8. Now, what was the rules for you in algebra when you were told to find the inverse function of something? That's not rhetorical. I'm asking y'all to remember. Um. 
Didn't you switch the X and the Y? Good. You switch. So this would be X is equal to 4Y plus 8. And then subtract the 8. And X minus 8 is equal to 4Y. Divide by 4. And Y is equal to X minus 8 over 4 or 1 4 times X minus 8. Okay. So you don't simplify that at all? No. No, the only thing you can do is like write it one fourth times x minus eight. That's about the only thing you can do. Okay. Just just check it. Because the reason is is people do this. You can't do that because that right there is a plus or a minus. Plus or a minus you can't cancel can't do that. Okay? Only time you can cancel is like this. And that's what? Multiplication. And you can cancel the two over four. Or you have two times x minus three over four. Again, that's multiplication. But if you got something in the middle like plus or minus, you can't cancel. Okay? Now I'll do this one. Okay. Find the inverse of 4x minus 7 over 4. Find the inverse of 4x minus 7 over 4. Okay. Why? is equal to 4x minus 7 over 4. x is equal to 4y minus 7 over 4. 4x is equal to 4y minus 7. 4x plus 7 is equal to 4y. And y is equal to 4x plus 7 over Okay, so that's a little bit of review. Now, two or three things I want you to remember about inverse functions. One is interchange or, I don't know if it's interchange or exchange, interchange. Interchange, X and Y. Two, domain and range may be restricted. Okay, the, one of the biggest things about inverse functions is that the directions or the teacher may restrict the domain. Right? In other words, find the inverse function and graph from negative 4 to positive 2. Usually they do that because mainly for symmetry. Okay, mainly the symmetry between the inverse functions. Alright? 3. The domain of original will be the range of the what? And vice versa. And the range of the inverse, or the range of the original, the range of the original will be the what? The domain of the inverse. The range of the original will be the domain of the what? Inverse. Okay, so those are some things that just you should remember. Um, so why don't you take the graph right quick, or your, uh, what do you call it, phone? Thank you. Take the calculator right quick and graph this one, and then graph this one, and do it with different lines, one being thin and one being thick. 
and then this one and this one. And just remember how to graph. Okay, so do that, and hopefully that will conclude the review over inverse because I'm going to cover a little bit of eight point whatever, nine point, what is it I told you inverses was, nine point four? But I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it because most of it you need to be able to do on the calculator. So just to make sure everybody knows how to do it. Let's go to your handy dandy calculator eventually. Take your handy dandy calculator And I don't forgot the first one. Let me pull it back up. Okay, thank you. All right, what is it? 4x. Y is equal to 4x. Minus 7. That's the original. Okay. Second insert. Let's see. Over 4. Divided by four, and then what was the inverse? Okay. Four x. Four x. Plus seven. Divided by four. Now, when you graph those, there's the original, and then there's the inverse, which. You're not going to really see a good inverse until you start to get with the uh, non-linears. But anyway, there's that. I forgot about that. I should have shown you a linear. Let's do a linear right quick. I'll just make up one. I don't like to make up one because that, sometimes that can be a pain. But let me go here and go here. Oh, things I do for y'all. I didn't even think about nonlinear. So f of x is equal to x squared plus 6. Okay, that's the same thing as y is equal to x squared plus 6. x is equal to y squared plus 6. x minus 6 is equal to y squared. And y is equal to what? There we go. Okay, and we'll graph that one. And this is where you'll see the symmetry and the domain and range and all that good stuff. So y is equal to x squared. So x squared plus 6. And then down here, the dark line is going to be y is equal to parentheses x minus 6 close parentheses raised to the 0.5 power and graph and you see there's that function and then you'll see there's that function we go zoom bit 0 Well, see, that's what happens when you make up stuff. Anyway. You can see that it's 6 and 6. Okay. Do what? The, you can see that the uh, domain for the first one is... Uh, but you're restricted on this one. Why? Because you can't take the square root of a rack. But you can see the symmetry... If you was to add this right here, anyway, you see there's that and there's that. You'll have a hyperbola over here, which can't go negative because you can't take the square root of negative. So that's why you don't have a bottom half of the hyperbola. So let's do one that you can really see. F of x is equal to, I know this one will work, 1 over x. There. Alright? Now, if you take that one, y 
is equal to 1 over x, and change x is equal to 1 over y, multiply both sides by y, then that will give you yx is equal to 1, and then divide by, divide by what? No, that's not right. Did I not switch it off? You didn't switch it over. Yeah, I did. Dang, I just can't get anybody to work right today. All right. We just have to rely on the book to show us. Because I can't think of any right thing on this. 1 over x, I thought it would give us 1 over x. No, that's the volcano. That's not going to work. That's that. X cubed. X cubed is what I was thinking of. F of x is equal to x cubed. Y is equal to x cubed. And x is equal to y cubed. There we go. And then the cube root, and the cube root. So y is equal to x to the one third power. There we go. Now graph those two, and then you'll see the symmetry a little better. It only took me two or three shapes of cobwebs to get it right. Okay, so that's going to be x to the third power. Delete, delete. And then y is equal x to the one third. Y is equal to x parentheses one divided by three. Close parentheses delete graph. There we go. And you see the symmetry. Boom. And that's really not a good. Let me go zoom in. You just go in one time. You'll see it a little bit better. Okay, there's the original function. And then you'll see the other one did the same thing, only it's going in the opposite direction. And there you see the symmetry. And where the the domain of this function now is the range of the what? Of the dark function. Okay? And the range of the lighter function is now the domain <clears throat> of the big function, or the, the darker function. So you have to think of the opposite, kind of like the opposite but the inverse. All right, now that's enough for me. I didn't know I was going to have to do five problems. I messed that up, sorry. So if we take y is equal to the sine of x. And all I want you to learn, all I want you to know in this section is kind of an introductory to this, okay? I'm not, you're talking about one question on the test out of 9.4. So please do not spend too much time on this. So x is equal to the sine of x, sine of y, sorry, and then divide by the sine, divide by the sine, and that's going to give you y is equal to the inverse sine of what? And that is the inverse of that. Now that's pretty elementary, but the whole point is to understand where you get it from. And if you take, now this is where you're going to see the restriction of the, the domain. Usually you're going to be given something from negative, like in this one, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay, that's going to be given. So therefore, if you were to draw the sine function from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. It's going to look like this. Okay? Now, the reason they want to, the reason they restrict it is for the symmetry, so you can see the symmetry a little bit better because if you draw the inverse cosine and the sine on the same graph, 
You're not going to see it. You're going to see a bunch of lines cross. Okay? Another reason is because if you do a horizontal line test, if you do a horizontal line test, then you're going to keep running into the different waves and it's not going to be a wonderful function. All right? So if it's if it's a continued domain like all real numbers, then you're not going to be able to, to do two things. You're not going to be able to, one, see the symmetry that well, and you're not going to be able to define it as a one-to-one -one function, meaning the symmetry is around the x or y axis. So the domain is restricted on these functions just so you can see what? So you can see the symmetry a little bit what? Better. All right, so here is the function for the inverse sine, which is going to be bass accurate pi over 2, negative pi over 2, negative 1, and positive 1. Now, if this one is going like this, what do you think this one's going to be doing? It's going to be going at a different type angle. It's going to be going like that. Not arrows, because it is a different one. Okay? And again, it's a one-to-one -one function, but you've got the domain here. Here's the domain. And I do this just for your benefit. The domain here is now the flow. And the range here is the domain here. So that's, those are two of the things that I want you to see. The symmetry as well as the domain and the range. Cosine and tangent, same. I'm not going to show you those because, well, I'll show you the cosine because that might be a test question. A lot of you sign of cosine. I'm not going to really go down a rabbit hole here with a bunch of questions. Y is equal to cosine of X. So X is equal to cosine of Y divided by the cosine divided by the cosine. Y is equal to the inverse cosine of X. Here we go. And the cosine Domain is going to be affected from 0 to pi. So from 0 to pi. And negative 1 to 1. So, of course, when you draw your opposite graph, your inverse graph, your negative 1 to 1 is now going to be where? Negative 1 to 1. Then your 0 to pi is going to be from here to up here. And it's going to be uh, And like I said, I'm not going to do the tangent. It's going to be the opposite, the inverse. I will, however, do one of these just so you can see how the, the trigonometric inverse works as far as algebraically. This is, this is algebraically. This is graphic. But one like this, a little bit more challenging. Y is equal to the inverse secant of x. Well, if you think about that, you divided both sides to get this inverse secant. So if you multiply both sides, that's going to be secant of y is equal to what? x. I'm going backwards. I'm going, I'm taking this and putting it back on this side. So I'm multiplying both sides by C. Now what is the secret? 1 over the what? 
Well, that's a pet sign. You put that right, class. So now, if you wanted to divide by 1 over the cosine, you could do that. And when you divide by 1 over the cosine, you multiply by the cosine. So you could do it that way. Or, in this case, you could multiply both sides by cosine. Away. Why is that coming up? So I get 1 is equal to x cosine of y. And you can solve for whatever, but you basically come down, divide both sides by, let's see, cosine of y divided by x. And that gives you cosine, inverse cosine, of negative 1, 1 over x is equal to y. So here I was able to rewrite secant in terms of cosine. And you don't have to go to here. You could have stopped, you know, right in here and said, you know, cosine of y is equal to 1 over x. You could have done that. Um, could have left it here, but that really doesn't help you. It helps you more when you have y. So that's just a way. Just remember your reciprocal identities because your reciprocal identities, whenever you're dealing with the inverses, you need to remember your, what I just said, reciprocal identities. If I spell that right. And you need it to go from here to here. So if I give you a question on 9.4, it's going to be either 1, the graph, or 2, change from sine to inverse sine, or something like this. So that's all I'm going to give you on 9.4. Okay? Capiche? Now, let's go over some more problems from 9.3. Since I know y'all did the homework. Find sine of 2 theta and cosine of 2 theta given the sine of theta is equal to 2 fifths and the cosine of theta is negative. All right, get to work. Give y'all two or three minutes to at least start the problem. If you can't do it, just consider yourself failing. What's the first thing you do? Determine what? Well, you got the sine. What can you find with the sine is equal to two fifths? What can you find? Well, I can put that in the Pythagorean theorem and I can find out what the other side is. Yes, that's right, class. Sine is equal to Oscar had. So I can draw me a triangle with the opposite being 2 and the hypotenuse being 5. Or I could put, you know, through the Pythagorean identity, cosine squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared. I could do that. So part 1. Cosine squared theta is equal to 1 minus what? Sine squared theta. So cosine squared theta is equal to 1 minus 2 fifths quantity squared. 
cosine squared theta is equal to 1 minus 4 over 25. Well, then I just need to sit the square at it because I don't know how to do fractions, right? No, I don't know how to do fractions. So cosine squared theta is equal to 25 over 25 minus 4 over 25. Cosine squared theta is equal to 21 over 25. Cosine theta is equal to the square root of 21 over 5. All right, now I'll give you a hint. To find this and this, you're going to have to use your double angle identities. And you should have them in front of you on that sheet that I told you to copy out like three weeks ago or a month ago. Sine of 2 theta and cosine of 2 theta. So get them out. Is it um sine two? Yes, sine two x is equal to two sine x cosine. Two sine cosine. Mm -hmm. Plug and what? Chug. Plug and chug. Or you could just stare and quit. So it's the second one. I don't have them in front of me. Sine two theta is equal to. Two sine, cosine. Well, you're going to do that one second. Yeah, you're going to do the sine and then you're going to do the cosine. Because it's asking, it's asking for what? Well, so you got to do both of them. Now, it's easy because now you've figured your first step. Remember, I told you in the notes the other day. Yes, what was this today? What's today? Yeah, Tuesday. Tuesday, I told you first step is to find the what? Find the other side. Now, if you want to find it using the Pythagorean theorem, or if you want to find it using the Pythagorean identity, what I tell you, I don't what? I don't care which one you use. But you got to do this first. And now you just plug and chug. And you'll feel good about yourself. The part two. Sine of two theta is equal to two sine theta cosine theta. So that's going to be two times what? Two fifths. And there's one thing I forgot. What did I forget to do? Somebody tell me what I forgot to do. Oh. Yes, that's right. It's supposed to be negative right there. Thank you. I'm so glad everybody's answering these well, questions. I know it's supposed to be negative there. That's why. So we just don't have to just put a negative there. there. Appreciate everybody in class answering that question. Now, 2 times 2 is 4 fifths. And that's going to be negative 4 square root of 21 over. Yeah, but be careful on the because I don't want to have to go back and give you all those points. Okay. In other words, oh, if it yeah, says exact, right. make sure you do exact on them. Exact means radicals. All right, now you do the cosine. I'll make this smaller.
So cosine of two theta is equal to cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. So that's going to equal cosine squared is negative 4 square root of 21 over 25 quantity squared minus parentheses or sine or 2 fifths quantity squared. And at this point, all of you should say what? I quit. Why? It's too many fractions. Too much. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What is that word? Work. Um, shouldn't shouldn't the cosine squared be um negative? It shouldn't because you're using the cosine. Yeah. I'm, well, wait a minute. Huh? You're using the wrong thing. Use the sine two of theta. You're using the sine of two theta. Oh, yeah. Negative twenty-one over five. Thank you. I don't know why I have notes. I never pay attention to it. I had that blue thing right there. What I did? What I did? Negative square root twenty-one over five. I don't know why I didn't call the notes. Negative square root twenty-one over five. Thank you, Miss Lovin and Mr. Crickenton, for the interaction. Appreciate that. It's always good to. Not sit there like a book on the wall. All right. So what do you do here? Well, you square each one. The negative is squared. The square root of 21 is squared. And the 5 is squared. Minus parentheses. 2 is squared. And the 5 is squared. Now, I do that. Not the, I just don't want you to sit there and blow a gasket because some of y'all will blow a gasket. And just totally screw it up. It's real simple. 21 over 25 minus what? Is equal to 17 over. Now that's the type of question I would give you on the test. One pretty, pretty short and sweet. But wasn't that 21 negative, that 21 over 25 negative? Huh? Yeah. If you square a negative, okay, we need to go back to fractions, okay? If you square it low here, I showed you, I got it right here. Oh, okay, I didn't see it. That's all right. I made a mistake, y'all made a mistake, we all made mistakes. The worst thing about a math teacher making a mistake is a math teacher makes a mistake and then tries to act like he didn't make a mistake. You ever had those teachers? Huh? Who was that word? Yeah. He does not like to admit he makes a mistake. Yep. And I had I had a couple of teachers like that in Clam Zine. If you said if, if you would have brought this up right here, right here, or where I put down a negative four, they would swear they didn't light it up. But they would swear something, something happened to the to the chalkboard. Just odd that all it is, you know, but the whole screen goes blank. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> all right, next question. So you need to mark that as a test question, a possible test question. When I tried to narrow down test questions for 9.4 today, and that's why I'm going over these, because these are possible, all these are possible test questions. Cosine of right, right cosine of 3x in terms of cosine of x. Now, first of all, you've got three. There is no, there is none, no identity that has cosine of 3x or 3 theta. So 
So that means you're going to have to rely on another identity to bust up that group. So what would that be? Well, what is 3x? Tell me how you get 3x. Two X plus one X, Hubert. Yes, that's right. So where do you see an identity that takes theta and breaks it up into A plus B? What's it called? That's it. So use cosine of A plus B. Now could you use the cosine of five X minus two X? Yes, if you like doing some change, knock yourself out. That's just extra work. Work and punch. So, cosine 3x is equal to the cosine 2x plus 1x. Cosine of 3x is equal to the cosine of 2x plus 1x. This is the product. It's cosine A and B. Cosine of A times cosine of B minus sine of A times sine of B. Check, look, make sure I remember that part. So cosine of A plus B. Let's see if I got this. Cosine of A. It's over two. Times cosine of B minus the sine of A sine of B. Check that. What? Uh, what no, that's the sum of the product. You're 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 in the wrong place. I heard the sum. Okay, I heard. So A is equal to what? It's 2X, and B is equal to X, so plug each other. Now, you think it's going to be that simple? No. Find X. Here it is. No, nothing's that simple. What do you have inside? Of that, you have the sine of what? You have the cosine of what and the sine of what? 2x. And what is the cosine of 2x and the sine of 2x? That's your double angle identities. So you've got, this is a nested problem. You've got, what's this called? What's this one called? The sum product? Is that what it's called? Identity. Sum difference. So here, one, you got the sum difference identity, and then you're going to have you're going to have two identities inside that. So here we go. Cosine of two x plus x is equal to cosine of two x. Ding. Double angle. Cosine of x minus Sine of 2x, ding, sine of x. So I'll take my highlighter. There's the double angle. And there's the double angle. So you got two of them. It should be minus. Is that it's minus. They haven't written plus minus in case. The plus or minus goes with the. Minus and plus over here. Oh, okay. So, yeah. that's all right. Save space. All right, finish it. Uh, I hope you got a whole page for this because this will take you half the whole page to do this neatly.
This is a prime example of a calculus or a trig problem. It's 10% new material, or 20% new material, and 80% what? Algebra. So this one is going to be cosine squared of x minus what? Sine squared of x, I'm going to put that in parentheses, times cosine of x, which comes down, minus 2 what? 2 sine of x times yeah. cosine of x. Times, times sine of x. Now, all you're doing is algebra, so get to it. Everybody in here should be able to do the next five or six steps. If you can't, then that means you need to brush up on the algebra. And there is one more identity in the algebra. One more trig identity. Help you finish it. Now, do you think I would put this problem on the test? Yes. 150% yes. Why? One, you have several identities in this problem. Four, I think to be exact. Two, your algebra, your algebra is tested, which will be tested also in the first variable calculus. And three, it covers pretty much everything we've covered in chapter nine. So yes, you will see this question, if not the book. So I'm going to strip you. This cosine, and I'm going to distribute. I'm going to rewrite this one as I'm just going to rewrite both. Cosine x, cosine squared of x minus sine squared of x, negative sine x, two sine of x, cosine of x. Now, the reason I did that is because everybody is used to seeing the multiplier in front of the parentheses. That's all the only reason I'm doing it. So, that negative goes there. What's the common mistake? Common mistake is students thinking there's a plus right here. 
and they'll say 2 sine of square of x plus cosine sine of x. There is no there is no addition here. This is multiplication. So you're only multiplying x times x. You're not multiplying x times y. All right? So just make that distinction. So cosine cubed of x minus cosine x. Now I want to change that sign because it's a little bit better. Sine squared cosine. Minus 2 sine squared cosine. And you notice that we have common one. Common terms right there. So cosine cubed of x minus 3 sine squared x cosine x. Now what? I mean, some algebra gurus to tell me, I mean, not algebra, but trig gurus to tell me what's next. I think we should quit, Hubert. Good. What? I don't know. Come on. Come on. Look at those three. Look at those two terms and tell me where you might could use another identity. One of the first basic identities we learned. Cosine minus sine. Okay. Are you thinking of the Pythagorean? Um. Just say yes. Uh, yeah, yes, yeah. that's what it is. Pythagorean is correct. No, I'm just kidding. Pythagorean is correct. Where can you use the Pythagorean identity here? Okay. Uh -huh. Sine squared is equal to what? One minus cosine squared x. What does the direction say? Right in terms of what? So you need to change that sine into cosine. Cosine cubed of x minus uh, three parentheses times cosine of x. Now finish it. You see why I would put this one on a test? Because if you couldn't do this one, if you couldn't do one like this one, then that tells me you don't know what you're doing. So I would take this one and I would practice it and I would do similar questions on this one like this one if you find one of your homework, which you should. And I would do it several thousand times. I'm going to rewrite this before I start. Cosine Q X minus three cosine of X times one minus cosine squared of X. Y'all see what I did? I just put the cosine out front so you can distribute the whole thing with the negative three. Well, I, I learned how to do this like the second semester. Of course, it wasn't due to our training that we had because we were having training on this. But I appreciate the compliment. Cosine of cosine cubed of x minus 3 cosine of x plus what? Cosine cubed of x. Now what? Um, 
Combine like what? Combine like terms. 1 plus 3 is what? Cosine cubed of x minus 3 cosine of x. That's it. Now, why do you need to learn how to do this? Because if you had this, it would be very difficult to find the derivative of that. Okay? Because there really is no way to do it unless you manipulate that and get it to look like this. Now this one, I could take the derivative of Or I can take the antiderivative of this. So the reason you're doing this is for so you can manipulate function into another form. Okay, if you was to graph cosine of 3x, and you was to graph 4 cosine cubed of x minus 3 cosine, you get the same answer. You get the same graph. Okay, now if I wanted to take the derivative of that, I could pull out the 4. And that would leave me with cosine cubed of x. And then I could take the derivative of that cosine. And I could pull out the negative 3. And I could take the derivative of cosine to negative sine. So that's going to make a positive 3 sine of x. What I'm going to get a word up here. Okay. The reason I'm showing you this is because I can't do this but in calculus. But I can do this in calculus. <clears throat> And so manipulation. Some of y'all are good at that. Alright? I even tell you what to do on this one. Write. Write. Rewrite. The following. And Rewrite the following as sum or difference. I can tell you which one to use. Two sine fifty eight. Cosine of 102. So you've got sine, cosine. So look for an identity with sine, cosine. Don't worry about the two. Just find sine, cosine. Some are different. Sine of A times sine of B. I'm sorry, cosine of B. Uh, you got your notes for it, you Cosine of B. Is equal to one half sine of A plus B plus the sine of of A minus B. Alright, finish it. This one is only three or four steps. No. What? Where did I get what? Some are difference. 
You should you should see sine cosine b. Sine a cosine b. Okay, I messed up. I was just wondering. Huh. Messed up. So that should be. No, 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 no. no let me see. Let me see. Product of sum. Sorry. Use product of sum. I messed up. Product to sum. There we go. That makes sense. Sorry about that. Of course, I would have fixed that on the test. So we still need to keep the two. Two, you just use it at the end to cancel out the one half. Just remember that. Yeah, you can if you want to. That's fine. So that's going to be one half sine. What's what's fifty eight plus one hundred two? One sixty. And what's one hundred two? Or what's fifty eight minus one hundred two? One hundred one what? Negative forty four. And then what happens when you multiply the two on both sides? That goes out. So your answer is sine of 160 plus the sine of negative 44. That's a short and sweet one I'd probably give you, but I'd rather give you one like the previous one. But There'll be some of these on there because it's good short and sweet. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I might just be like stupid here, but um, I, I didn't catch why uh, you took the one half out, why you could cancel it out. Okay, never mind. Because yeah, I started with this, look. I started with this. I left the two off, okay? So, this stupid thing will pull away. This is what I started with, right here. See? So, I'm just kind of pulling this out. I'm pulling it out, and we'll bring it down here. Okay? You with me? Two. Yeah, I saw it now. And you multiply both sides by two. If I bring it back in, and I multiply both sides by two, what's going to happen to one hand? It's going to fall off. Yeah, it's it's to the two and the one hand. And that's what you left. All right. Rewrite. The expression. as a product of two trig functions. Cosine 4x minus cosine of 2x. Now you're looking for something that says cosine of A minus cosine of B on the left hand side. I would assume so. Cosine of A minus B 
is equal to 2 sine a plus b over 2, blah, blah, blah. Yes. Cosine, cosine, there it is. So this one is some difference on one. They name them different ones on different pages. This is some difference. Is that what you said? Okay. But what you're looking for is you're looking for cosine of A minus cosine of B. That's what you're looking for. And that's equal negative 2 sine of A plus B over 2 times the sine of A minus B over 2. Now, I'm not trying to insult anybody's intelligence, but it's pretty simple. Negative 2 sine, what's 2x plus 4x? 6x over 2 sine 6 minus 2, or 4 minus 2 is 2x. Negative 2 sine 3x sine of x. What? Oh, no, that's it. That's two trig functions. As a product of two trig functions. Yeah. Product of two trig functions. Two sign, sign. This is different from this one. These are two different animals. I thought that meant like two different things. Well, let me say this. This is the. This is a this is a calf and this is a ball cat. All right, they they got four paws and a tail, but they're totally different. So yes, that's a, that's two different trig functions. That's all right. All right, try this one. Now you're looking for, and I'm just trying to get y'all to see what to look for here. I'm just gonna give you. I'm not gonna say anything. I'm not gonna give you any directions. Sine of 2 theta minus sine of 4 theta. So now you're looking for the sine of A minus the sine of B. Oh, shoot. I'm going to go finish this right quick. So that's going to be 2. I'm going to skip a step here. Cosine. Uh, plus 2 plus 4. 6, 6 divided by 2 is 3, right? And then what's 2 minus 4? Negative 2 divided by 2 is theta. So that's going to be minus sine theta. That's in parentheses. So what can I do with that negative? Bring it out front here. That's right, class. Okay, so now you've got the whole weekend to work on nothing but chapter nine. Focusing on nine point one, might as well say nine point one, nine point two, nine point three. 9.5 and 9.6, and then just do worry about those couple that I did and do your homework for 9.4 or 9.3, whichever one. The inverse functions, I'm not worried too much about the inverse functions. Um, and that's it. All right. Y'all have a good day, and I'll see y'all when? Tuesday. Okay. Uh, Pre-review and homework questions on Tuesday.